Hi, and thanks for tuning in. Right now, I'm going to be talking about the Real Estate Board of New York financial statement and how to complete it to the best of your ability. This is a form that you should get familiar with, as you will be filling it out both for an initial offer as well as once you go to submit a board application. Now, you may not always see it in this format as an Excel spreadsheet. You may see it as a PDF or as a Word document. You may see all of these fields. You may see some of these fields. But I want you to get familiar with this, and I've chosen this format because it's a very user-friendly format with a lot of auto-populating. As you can see, it is made up of three actual pages. Page one is a snapshot of your assets, your liabilities, your income, and your monthly expenses. Of course, you should fill out the, conting the contingent liabilities, and you don't really need to fill out the general information of where your accounts are held at. Page two, the schedules, is a schedule of stocks and bonds, which again, you can break out later. You don't necessarily need to do that at the beginning. Your schedule of real estate, which would be here, and then your schedule of notes payable. Page three is more property specific. So this is where you can fill out the purchase price, the down payment, the mortgage amount, uh, the maintenance at, and or the common charges, and it'll auto populate your debt to income ratio, or here it's called debt service ratio, as well as your liquid assets after the purchase, which is done in the form of months and then in a dollar amount. So I'm zoomed out a little bit here. I'm gonna actually walk you through this step by step. So for the sake of this demo, I'm going to assume that we're dealing with one individual person here, okay? So I'm going to play around with some numbers, um, starting with cash in bank. So again, this number should line up with what you actually see on your bank statement. It is understandable that money will be moved around, whether it's right before you actually make the purchase or... Um, maybe you plan on doing it in between the time when you're making an offer and the time that you're purchasing. So definitely ask me which number you should insert here, um, especially if you plan on, on moving money around. Um, this, this form, once you go to submit an offer, should be very accurate with what your current um, financial situation is. So let's assume for the purposes of this demo, you've got about $200,000 in cash, uh, money markets, maybe you have another 20,000. Um, the contract deposit, you're not going to fill out that part until you actually put a contract deposit down, which is generally 10%. Um, let's assume you have a mortgage of $1.2 million. I'm sorry, let's assume you have real estate for $1.2 million. Um, and you have an IRA that's worth about $40,000, a 401k that has about $120,000. Again, don't always round up. It should be an accurate number to your bank statement. And as you can see, it's going to auto-populate and total your total assets. Again, for the purposes of this demo, you do not have a co-purchaser. We also are going to assume that there is no debt, but you should include any debt that you have here. Uh, where it says outstanding credit card loans here, I do just want to point out that if you haven't paid your credit card bill this month, that's fine. Don't insert anything there. If you have any revolving credit, that's what you should be putting there. Okay, now going down to the sources of income. Let's assume that you are making $250,000 base. This number should align with your tax return, with your W-2, um, and ideally with a letter of employment, which again, you will need to submit with an actual board package. Um, let's also assume you're making $55,000 as a bonus, and that would be all of your income. As you can see again, it auto-populates the total. Now, we're not really gonna mess around with this portion. As you can see, it says do not fill in C page three. So for now, we're not gonna fill out page two. You can fill that out as applicable to you. Now let's pay, play with page three. On page three, again, this is very property specific. So I like this page because as you start to think about what you wanna offer versus what you actually end up purchasing the home for, we can play around with the numbers without 
uh, messing up these forms. Like if we had to fill it out on a PDF, we'd have to erase it and retype it. So for this example, let's assume you're spending $500,000 on the property. You are going to be putting down 20% because the building, let's just assume, only allows 80% financing. The mortgage rate, let's assume 4% over 30 years. Now for the mortgage rate, this does not have to be a locked in rate, especially for an initial offer. So don't worry too much about that, okay? As you can see, it pulled from page one, your salary and your bonus, and it came up with your total annual income. Um, from up top here, it pulled up your monthly mortgage cost. Now it wants us to insert the maintenance, which is for a co-op and common charges and taxes will be totaled in this column, in this section as well. So let's assume it's $1,300 a month. Again, we have no other financial obligations. So that leaves us with a monthly um, payment of $3,210. And as you can see, it auto-populates here your debt to income ratio, a breakdown between your salary only as well as the salary and the bonus. And if we scroll down, you will see that it auto-populates and it pulls from page one with your cash, with your non-liquid assets. And then down here, you can see this is an important number. This is your liquid assets after the purchase. So that's 37 months and $120,000, which is a really great place to be. So for more information, check out some of the other videos here. And if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks so much.